Welcome back to Studio One Vintage. Today we are looking at a OM28, a 1931 Authentic. This is made as close as they can to a 1931 OM. So do a wonderful sound to it. So let's just go over some of the details. So this is an OM28, so that means it's a longer scale, a 25.4 scale, and um, it has Madagascar rosewood back and sides, has this kind of nice seam that goes all the way around. And it's an Adirondack top that has VTS on it. So uh, if you don't know what VTS is, it's a um, the vintage tone system that Martin has been using on their newer guitars. Um, essentially what they do is they are able to dry out the top of wood um, to match the same moisture content that a guitar from 1931 has. So and it, effectively they're, they're aging the guitar in a way and it, um, it ages the top allowing the top to sound a bit more open straight out of the bat so you know they, they say it takes four to eight years for a Martin to really open up this is coming straight out of the box um, on the way to being fully open the uh, the mid sound absolutely great on this being a relatively new guitar the highs just need a little playing for maybe a few months or two It feels like we've got medium lights on here and we've got some kind of bronze string. Um, so, uh, this OM31 Authentic is a, uh, is a very close recreation of what they made in, in 1931. Um, I've been lucky enough to play a guitar from 1931 like this. This does, um, this holds a candle to it, it's, it is close. Obviously a guitar, you know, that's almost 100 years old, has a lot of aging and a lot of playing put through it. But for a guitar to come out of the box like this, um, it's, quite, it's quite incredible, you know. Um, 20 years ago you weren't uh, able to, to get this so easily. So, um, uh, so this doesn't have a, um, uh, this doesn't have a truss rod. Uh, so you don't have the popsicle brace, as they as they call it, the brace that might let you down in the future. Um, also, you know the bridge on this is very seems very thin thin compared to the the modern examples, and um, and also Madagascar has has a tendency to actually smell. And this this has like a uh, this does have an aroma to it. Um, if you put it in the case for a while, it might come back really strong. They generally smell almost like roses. So, um, I'll take this opportunity to talk about the OM guitar itself. So, uh, you know, Martin started building guitars in 1833, and before that he was apprenticing. And between 1833 and, and really, you know, 1929, they slowly, Martin slowly developed uh, body styles. They, you know, they went from their traditional styles, and they went to the single O, then the double O, then the triple O. And then... Uh, you know, kind of mid twenties, they'd got to the triple O and they were making a twelve fret model, but they didn't have fourteen frets at that point. And a banjo player at the time, uh, Perry uh, Bichel, he basically went to Martin. He was a he was a top banjo player at the time. He went to Martin and said, "Look, can I get a a triple O? But can I get a uh, a longer neck, more like a banjo?" And so. That guitar was made for him, and that was, uh, I think, made in 1929, and that was the first OM, which is essentially a long-scale triple O. And um, 
uh, sadly that guitar perished in a fire and so we don't have it in, um, anymore but uh, from then on the OM kind of became um, the secret uh, great guitar in the Martin catalogue you know you had the the D28s and the, the Dreadnought coming along but the OM um, was only was made in limited numbers but it was very well loved and nowadays an OM from that period you know early 30s are uh, absolutely incredible. I've played four of them um, so far, um, 28s, I've played two 18s, and the 28s are just uh, phenomenal. Um, I don't know quite how to describe it, but the back bracing, and it's the same on this guitar, you have here, you have your standard braces, but on the, these back braces, they're not uh, tall and like a ridge, they're more... They, they're about two centimeters wide and they're only about you know probably five mil tall so they're kind of a uh, low and flat brace um, I don't quite know what to call that uh, apologies but um, it just ha it has a very different response on the on the back of the guitar like you can feel this you can feel this part of the guitar the back really responds to the low end um, so it's kind of not a uniform response that you'd feel on a normal OM. So this guitar is a, is a great reproduction of what they made in the early 30s in the OM category. And with the Madagascar Rosewood and uh, the Zero Trust Rod, you just have an instrument that plays uh, uh, just so well. Um, the No Trust Rod uh, is not a common thing nowadays, but uh, without a Trust Rod, um, the neck is still reinforced. And, and really you can the neck feels very different because it does to my to me it feels uh, less spongy you can kind of feel the truss rod in a guitar and if it's not set up right then the guitar is really not comfortable to play and um, you know if it's not sitting right or if it's, the temperature's not right on the day the neck can just feel a bit strange because you've got this you know you've got a rod in the middle that's trying to do something to the wood but in this case you've just got a solid neck and so they they just uh, you feel a different type of vibration through them. You don't have that rod vibrating, but you have the whole mix vibrating. And really, what you get is you get a much easier guitar to play. Also mentioned, it doesn't have the Martin logo here, but it has the stamp on the back, uh, which I am always a fan of. The stamp always looks great on the guitar. And being Madagascar rosewood as well, um, in the OM category, um, Madagascar wood isn't available um, so readily through Martin now. Um, they've limited it now. So this, this selection of Adirondack VTS with Madagascar is um, something rare in the OM community. And and I'm, I'm impressed by the VTS, you know, it, it seems a lot more open than it should be. I still think that, um, you know, give this a bit of play and it will open up more. Let's do some... Uh Also play very lightly. I should say that um, the vintage guitars really part of what you're buying is you're buying their response. So you can play a vintage guitar if it's a, it's a good one. You can play it very lightly and you get a great response and then when you play it loud, it's loud and it's louder than most things you could find. Um, I'll just say that I've played a, a 32 OM that is the loudest guitar I've played, beat out anything else. It had, in fact had so much headroom I could not play it hard enough. Um, so a guitar like this with the VTS and the Madagascar, it really has a great dynamic so if you're, you're a light player, you can play very lightly and then if you, you kind of work on it, you can so you can get a lot more dynamics out of an instrument like this. So uh, I think I've waffled on enough about this guitar. Um, I'm really impressed by it and I think someone should come and grab it. Alright, cheers.